Hey Clashers and welcome back to another video. And today we want to take a look at the final match of the Itsu Cup, the finals in between of QSFN and Hanoi Royal. The winner of this one is going to take down the majority of the prize pool, which is $1,000. And we're already getting in, no big words before. Let's just get into the action. And we have Kitano starting things off. QSFN so far were really, really strong in this tournament. So let's see if they can push this all the distance and we have Kitano starting off with the Blizzard Lalo. And this really interesting looking um, base from Bia. And we have a Blizzard going for that Town Hall. The good thing for this Blizzard is that the gap in between of the wall and the Town Hall is only one tile. If this would have been like a two gap thingy, then this could have been all different to be honest. So now he's starting off with his Queen. He got everything from the Blizzard he wanted. He got even the Defending Queen. He got the Defending Warden. Everything is in the books. And now he's... Oh, he's using the... Okay, why is he not using the Sneaky Goblins to funnel? Maybe just way too late. That might be a reason because now... Where are those Sneakies? Those Sneakies are way too late. And now the Queen is not going for the Scatter. That's really not good. That's not good at all for him. The heroes are pushing him from the bottom side. Now he's trying to push back the queen. Is this going to work? That's the big question. Queen is going for the bottom side, but the buildings are getting cleared. The queen is going for the wall. Wait a sec. Where's the queen going? Either way, the Lalo is, the Lalo is going. Wait, that queen. That queen is insane. She's getting pushed back all the way to the back. And now it's all about this Lalo somehow making it this freeze onto the scatter, but he's missing the wizard tower, which have some impact maybe. And now we have the defending. Oh, those defending super minions typically right now. Typically right now, those super minions are not a good choice in the defensive clan cast. Right now, the hound is really, really strong. But this time around though, this time around though, those super minions could be clutched. There's one air expo. And this one air expo could be all the difference, all the difference which Hannah Royal needs. It seems like this expo is staying alive. Now, can this king somehow save this? There's two ground expo, which means as long as this one expo is going down on air, he might have a chance, but this king going down, the minion is getting taken down, which is on this expo, which means it's going to be the first defense of this match. The minions are going to take down a couple of more percentages, but not that much, to be honest. So, it's going to finish uh, around like 96, Dark Elixir Storage, Double cannon and clan castle, so it should be 96%. Um, at the end of the day, a couple of more red bombs were up there as well. But yeah, this cannon is going to go down in an epic fight. We have an epic fight coming up in between of the beater and the two minions. It's always looking so funny. Like when you put an archer onto, onto the storage or something, and you have the endless resources because the beater right behind is going to repair it nonstop. That's exactly what we're seeing right there. I feel like the minions are just too strong. If it would have been one minion, I don't think he would have gotten it. But hey, two minions are too strong for one builder, so it's going to be the 96%. Now the next attack, we have Jack coming in with this signature army, which is this dragon, dragon rider and inferno dragon spam, which he is so good at. Can he make this? We have an interesting setup with those double sweepers. The heroes are in from the far right side and... Pushing into the eagle direction. He has no wall breaks with this army, but he's using the Inferno Dragon on the far right side to push those heroes inside. The tower's going down, but wait a second. There's no pathing whatsoever. What is he doing? I mean, to be honest, I'm not an air spam expert, so this might be still a three stun. I'm just not clever enough to actually spot the power of this. But I feel like those four defenses on the back end, as long as those four defenses are at, at least not getting tanked or there's damage on them or something, <clears throat> this Royal Champ is never ever going to overcome this power on the back end. Having a defensive warden on the back end, having defensive expos on the back end or a scatter shot is like the worst nightmare for an air attack like this. And this rage, it was it was a good idea, but those dragons are not going for the back end, which means this warden is staying alive forever. The defending scatter shot is staying alive forever as well. And now everything is yeah, everything's relying on those heroes, the Queen and the Royal Champion. There's the Royal Champion ability, but he's not taking down this 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 big threat on the back. And now the first of those four defenses is going to go down, which is, as I said, this is what is coming down to. Those four defenses being somehow taken down. But as long as this is not happening, 
this base is going to defend and that's looking like a really solid defense because he has not any more percentage troops for the mortar for example or anything so he is relying on the queen ability to get some more percentages but needs to be careful this defending scatter and warden can kill his queen through her ability so he's using the ability early there's even a hound inside the clan castles here so this is not going to be a three star by any means but it's going to be an 87 percent so qsfn leading early with percentage but obviously yeah, percentage lead is one thing, but it's only percentages. So still, everything is open. Leo is coming in next for QSFN. I think he name changed from Queen George Leo to Leo now. and But he's sticking with his armies. He's sticking with his armies. Queen George is his thing. And he's so, so good at it. So can he show this off against L plus... Okay. That's a white name, but okay. Can he make it work against this base? That's the big question. Um, we have the Queen Georgian. Is he actually going to go into the tunnel like this? That's ballsy. That's really ballsy going into the tunnel poison because the Queen has no other chance of going anywhere except to the single Fermion Tower, which might be a good thing, but at the same time, with this, he's going directly into the tunnel poison. But at the same time, there is the clan castle is too far away to make this like a complete nightmare to the queen. So he's going to freeze that. Yep, yeah, perfect timing. Really, really good timing on that freeze. There's now the next rage any second. Yep, that's how things are getting handled. Which means the town of poison is actually not as bad as I was thinking. Espe oh, there's the next wall break. Can he make the wall break work? Is there's no nato trap. Oh, the nato trap was actually there, but it was too late. Um... So the Warbreak is still working, but now the Queen is going to go into so, so much damage. The King is trying to do a good job of taking down already at least one of the Expos, but there's going to be three more Expos firing on that Queen in just a couple of minutes. There's the Freeze, Poison on the Super Minions, Roachem ability to take down the Scatter, but this King... Can the Royal Champion take down the Expo? This would be huge because this would be way less damage on the Queen. But it seems like so far that the Royal Champion is skipping that Expo, which means more damage on that Queen again. The Air Defense is shooting on the Double Shooters as well, which means he has not as much power left anymore. But the Lalo has started as well. Can he make this work? Did he get, like, did he get enough value? That's the majority. Uh, like, that's the big question right there. Lalo is pushing in from the top side. We have the Slammer tanking the Scatter really nicely. There's the Dragon Rider in there as well. The Queen... Having no ability left, so she is left to die. But now it's all about the back end. So far, though, there is so many loons coming in. And this one Dragon Rider is tanking the Expo. And even tanking the Red Bombs and the Wizard Tower. This is looking crushed from Leo. Only time can save this base. But to be honest, with so many cleanup troops and even a couple of cleanup loons, this is going to be the first three star of this match, Q QSFN getting it done, Leo is getting it done against this base. And what a wonderful queen charge that was, really impressive showing from him. Queen charging through the town hall into the core of this base, that's a really uncommon approach. But now we have the next attack coming in, Hannah Royal is choosing the queen short hybrid onto Leo. There's another revenge, there is the revenge, revenge going on. The question is... Is this going to be a 3 star to tie things up again? To make it a 5-5 five, five for the moment. But first, but first, the single Fermion Tower has to be taken down. There's a couple of traps, uh, Black Mine and Red Bomb, which is uh, really nicely getting triggered. And now, wait a second. That was actually a really, really good couple of loons because the single Fermion Tower should not kill the... That was so close, just one second more and this Inferno Tower would have taken down the ability of that Queen, but really nicely done with the Rage, which means even though the entry was kinda... They tried to make it expensive, right? Like QSFN tried to make it more expensive with this charge on the bottom side with the Sing Inferno Tower. But with this setup, um, just with the setup of those test loons, he... That was an incredible good job of actually making sure that not too much... Um, damage is happening. Now the hybrid is getting started, but where is the queen going? The queen is going directly into the town of poison as we saw in the last attack, but this time though, this time we have the clan cast over there as well. He needs to rage maybe. Maybe it's going to be the rage. Either way, there is the heal spell for all of those hybrid troops. Defending queen is dealing a ton of damage to those hybrid troops because the king has tanked quite a bit on defense, but now with those headhunters, the queen is getting just obliterated. Wait a second, what is the attacking queen doing? The attacking queen is... 
He's going for the wall. That is not good at all. But the king and the Pekka are pushing him from the top right into the eager component, which is a great, great approach with this wall break. But there's now the giant bombs coming up. Is this going to be enough hybrid to overpower the backhand? It is going to be the scatter and the warden combination. The queen somehow survived out of this. The queen, I feel like the queen did not take down a lot. She just took down... She didn't even take down the, the clan castle, to be honest, because the hound... The Hound went to the Hybrid. So, I don't know. The Queen did pretty much nothing. But now it's all about the back end scatter. Is the scatter going down? The Hog Rides are there. The Hog Rides are on this scatter shot, which means it's going to go down. And with this, there is no defense left in this base. The Queen is going to reach everything as soon as... As soon as she's going for another wall, that, that's how she's doing it, right? But this is going to be a 3-star all the way. Really, really good job with the Queen short. Even though I'm really surprised that this worked. Because it feels like the queen did not get that much. The queen just took down the town hall. She lured the clan castle but did not take it down. So yeah, big question mark. But either way, next attack is in loop zero with the queen short Lalo. That's not like what we used to see from him. Typically we see like crazy Lalo attacks with like a Sui, Blizzard, Skelly Donut. But queen short Lalo is uh, one of the first times I see him do this strategy. So let's see. How he's being able to push against this ring, this legend base. I freaking hate it with queen charges, to be honest. I have attacked it a couple of times already. And I don't know, this setup of base with all of those core expos is so annoying to deal with. Um, but yeah, let's let's see what he can do. First off, freezing the ground expo because it's a bit, a little bit too much damage on this queen. So a nice, nice touch right there. Now it's all about this queen choosing one side. It seems like she's going for the bottom side, which is totally fine for him. Like he's, he does not care where, she, the ba uh, where the queen is going because the base is pretty much symmetrical. And now he's starting off with the king. The king for the defending queen and then the wall break into the Mojang Fern Tower, it seems. Okay. So far, so good. He has two more wall breaks. One probably is going for the archer. Um, for, the, for the archer queen, for, for the queen platform. Yep, it, exactly. Now the freeze onto the onto the Inferno Tower, but can he now make this work and take down the town or take down the core multi Inferno Tower? That would be huge on this base. The Royal Champion is not taking down too much else, but now the Slammer is coming and this Slammer should path directly to the to the Eagle, which is huge, which is really, really strong. And there's another Tesla from at this top side. As we know, all of those bases are legend bases. So people, it seems like people tend to do a warden walk up there. And that's why the Tesla farm is over there to force some spells. Maybe even force the warden ability because people are really not expecting it. Expecting it. But all of those healers are going down, which is really, really bad because this queen has reached her limit. So this expo and the Mojang Fire Tower and the air defense is going to be the last remaining defenses. Can he push that through? The back end... Loons are coming in, but they're way too early. The damage of the air defense is not getting split. Those loons were too early. And with this, it means the air defense is, uh, yeah, not really tanked correctly. There's even the NATO trap. The NATO trap is making things worse for Loop Zero. He needs that three star. The Mojang Fire Tower is going down at least. He's trying to lure over the healers, but those archers died, which means the healers are stuck in nowhere. So everything is relying on this Dragon Rider, on those last couple of loons. The Dragon Rider is tanking. Can this Edifice go down? The Edifice needs to go down to make sure that this is going to be 3-star. And it is going down. And with this, we should have enough time. And Loop Zero is getting it done. It was a close one. It was a really, really close one. But he's getting things done. Really good job to Loop Zero. Making sure that he's getting this 3-star in. And this means... QSFN is on 8 stars and Hannah Royal has to answer again. But so far this match is so close. So I guess I guess they're going to tie things up again. But this time, oh, this was the only strategy so far for Hannah Royal, which has failed. So is this going to work this time? We have the Dragon, Dragon Rider, Inferno Dragon attack. And again, like I don't see too much pathing about this time around. Let's figure out the back end. This is this is something I know about this strategy. Let's figure out the back and how this looks like. Because the last time we had, I think, two expos, a scatter, and the warden on the back end. This time, though, there is no there's only the scatter shot on the back end, which means it's less damage for the back end royal champion, which is giving her more opportunities to push through. So as long as this warden is going down, as long as the royal champion is going down, um this is looking good. I feel like the most important thing is the back end for this attack switch. If the back end is not stacked with Expos or like the warden or heroes this attack is looking strong and now We have this king pushing in from the 
right side with that queen together. Oh, is that queen? No, the queen is not following inside. But see, it's looking good for um, Fahina and Roy right there. The rage this time is getting used for those heroes to push them through. Queen with her ability still left. Roy champ ability still left as well. Is he going to use that anytime soon? I, th I think, yeah, I think he should got it, right? Like, I think he, he got it. Yep. With the queen ability, he has another two freezes left on the, at this point. So, really good job. Hannah Royal is going to tie things up again on stars only because QSFN is having still the percentage lead. But so far, it's a back and forth non stop in between of those two teams. Wow, this is a this is a really close really close finals match. So let's see what QSFN can bring up next because they need the next three starter to push their lead further. And this is going to be Picasso. Wait a second, what? Jack, you're a troll. Jack, you're a complete troll. Why is he using? I built the space like two months ago or something or three months. I don't know. It's already quite old to be honest. I built this base there. I know a lot of people copied it back then, but to be honest, I feel like it never really defended really nicely in Legends. Um, because Blizzard is wrecking this base, unfortunately. So Blizzard is really wrecking this base, typically. Uh, this is why... And this is like back then where Blizzard, um, Hydra, Blizzard Dragons were so popular. So, um, well, I know a Queen Charge around the right side, how to how to finish out this base, but Pet Castro is coming with the Queen Charge Electro Dragon. Wait a second, I didn't even see that. He's going with the Electro Dragon follow up. What is he going for? I feel like those lightnings are even not that great. Why is he going with Electro Dragons? I mean, I can understand um, the Electro Dragon choice on some of those really stacked ring bases, but I feel like this base is not even that stacked in the core. But let's see, Pet Castro needs to get this three star. On, yeah, on, on my base. <laughs> let's let's see. We have the blimp coming in, but there's the sweeper really far on the back end. We have the blimp flying across. Oh, is there the, typically the natives around the town as well? And he's wait a second. He is that is a big question mark to me. He is bringing the sneaky goblins for the town hall. I don't understand this at all because now he's raising up one electric dragon. Why is he bringing the sneaky goblin blimp to the mix? Because Pekka Smash is wrecking this base, so he has, like, the defender has to bring the Triple Ice Golem, right? Like, this is this mind game, um, obviously, but still, the Triple Ice Golem or a Hound Clan Castle has to be used on this base, otherwise this base has no chance of defending. So, really big question mark, why is he going with the Sneaky Goblin Blimp? Because a Raged E-Dragon or, like, a Raged Normal Loons, whatever, would have been really good on this one, and now there's just... There's just a little bit of core left. The, the, so the sweeper is a huge pain for the one electric dragon. And to be honest, there's not too many percentages left which he can pick off because he has not too many troops left to pick them off. So there's one minion on the top right. There's a couple of archers on the bottom side. But this sweeper, this sweeper really gave him a hard time. And since this base, I guess I have to look up for the base link for you guys. I would, I would try and see if I find the base link and I guess I would put it into the video description. If you want to copy it, but why? This is such an old base of mine. This is so funny that Jack is still running this, or at least having this even on his account. Like, what is going on? Maybe it's another ring base which is doing great against those Royal Ghosts. This might be a possibility. Yeah, I, I feel like this base looks like a really solid base against Royal Ghosts. But since we're lucky and Royal Ghosts should run out in the next 22 hours or something anyway. So, um, yeah, but... Well, either way, 79% two-star, and this is a really solid defense uh, on this level. So now we have Bia coming in, and this is going to be a Pekka Smash with the Dragon Rider and Bats. What is going on? What is going on? Okay, we have those Bats by then for the back, and we have the Blimp, which is typically placed for the Town Hall. Um, I'm not sure if he's going for the long, like for the far side Blimp, which means like from the 9 o'clock compartment. That would be a really... That, that blimp would need to fly all the distance. Maybe he's going for a short side blimp. That might be an option as well. He's not going for the warden walk for the inferno tower. Instead, he's just going for the funneling. What is he going? What is he going? Oh, he's going for the dragon rider for the inferno tower. Okay, that makes sense to be honest. That makes actually really like that is actually really smart. Really cool idea. Okay. The Inferno Tower is down. It's a quite a heavy investment with the Dragon Rider and everything, but it should be worth it. There is the blimp now for the tunnel, which we were speaking about. And now we have the push into the core. We have the bats still not 
uh, still left. Okay, wait. Bats are in. What are the what are the bats? Oh, the bats are in for already from the top side because he's freezing over there. And now we have this huge push coming in. I feel like all of those super wizards died already, which means it's only the huge, I don't know, HP ball of Pekka, Ice Golem, and everything left. But at this point, they only have to tank, right? They only have to tank because those bats are going to clean up everything. There's only this last compartment, which is a big threat to those bats. There's only the scattershot in there. And so far, those bats are doing an amazing job. But those Tesla, they have a really high fire rate. So... Those Tesla might be a big problem for those bats. There's not too many bats surviving, but we have the Queen still left. The Queen is still left. The Queen has the option of finishing off this base in 1 minute and 10 seconds. So time is looking really good for Bia. There are a couple of ice cones which are popping now. Huh. Is this going to be... Can the scatter go down already? That would be obviously huge. But to be honest, at this point anyways, it's going to be the 3 star. Queen is going to fi finish things off. The pack are ta therefore tanking. And uh, yeah, that's going to be the next three star. And with this attack, with this attack, Hannah Royal is going to push ahead. And QSFN needs to get the next attack as a three star. Otherwise, they have pretty much no chance of winning left in this matchup in the final. So let's see if QSFN can three star the next attack to pressure, to pressure Hannah Royal just a little bit. So Giovanni is in. We have a Queen George Lalo. And we have the jump spell, which so far, which so far, we have uh, a new a new approach evolving over the last couple of, I don't know, weeks, days. It's, it's pretty fresh still. So what, what am I talking about? So the idea about this attack strategy typically, let's see if he's going to do that, right? That, that's the next question. But one thing which we're seeing more and more often is this queen charge around the town hall, which we're seeing still quite often um, already. But now we have the twist to it. Now we have the twist, which is going to be, you're going to walk back into the next closest compartment, and then you're going to jump back to the town hall. So you're not going to jump into the core of this base, you're going to jump back to the town hall, because this means you can then use the king for something else, not for the town hall. And that's, it seems like so far at least, that's exactly what he's doing. Using the king to tank down the eagle, and then he's going to jump back to the town hall with this queen. So this is, like I said, a really, really... Um, fresh approach on those type of bases, which we're seeing nowadays from those pros. So, um, yeah, I really highly think that this is going to be the approach on this base, which is going to happen. So far, though, King is getting all of the value, all of the value he needs. The Royal Champ supporting him, and now the Queen is having to go for the town. There's the clan castle coming out. There's the first black mine. The loon was just a second too late. The loon was just a second too late, but the second black mine is getting caught by this test loon. Okay. Royal Champ ability already. The Royal Champ is not going to get this scatter out of the way. But with this approach, that's, there's one big problem. And that's the core multi tower, which might be a big problem for Giovanni as well. So, let's see. There is the jump. Is he going to place the slammer into the core and make sure that this... No, he's actually going to place the slammer to tank for the scatter shot, which is interesting. And there's the back end test of which is really not great. He's... Oh, that's a smart choice. Okay, so let's let's figure out and let's break down what exactly we're seeing right now. He's using the warden ability incredible early. Why exactly is he doing that? The only reason why he's doing that is he wants to have the hound alive for as long as possible. There's a lot of single target damage which can made through those... Uh, through those loons in the back end compartment, which is the air defense itself. There's the Tesla form in there. Um, so there's a lot of point defense damage. He needed to have this hound alive, otherwise there's no chance of the three star. And give me one second while I'm explaining all of this. The tower has to still go down. The queen ability is getting forced. Healers are down. There's the giant pop. The queen is staying alive. Tower is going down. 30 seconds. He needs that three star. Giovanni, can he get it? There's some loons on the core, and I think he he did it. He did it. Giovanni is getting that 3-star, which was needed for QSFN. And now we need from Hannah Royal, I think like an 88%, 89% for the percentage win. But Hannah Royal, we have seen their attacks. They were incredible quick. So Hannah Royal need an 88% 2-star to win this match on percentage. Um, on a, not on the percentage, but on time. That's what all they need. Okay, so... Let's see, it's going to be from Truck, Truck Paris, and he's coming in with the Queen Charge Hybrid. He's bringing one Yeti. Your wall breaks. Okay, the Queen is actually... Wait, I think this was not planned, that this Queen is backtracking. Give me one second. This is not planned. He's deploying the healers now. We have the Queen going for that Town Hall compartment. So he has now to switch things up. We have seen... 
the wall break on the far left side already, which was not meant, like, which was not meant for a bottom entry. That thing of, oh, that NATO, that NATO is barely pulling out the queen again from the Inferno Tower range. And we see on the far left side, the wall break. We know he wanted to start from the top side, so he has to now switch up his plans. Going in from the bottom side, I feel like, this is way, way better at this point, except like going from the top side. But now he's facing the clan castle inside the Singer Fern Tower, so things are not looking too good for Truck Paris. Things were going wrong, so can he get this 88% two shot? That's all what they need to win this edition of the Itsu Cup. Another freeze, another perfect timing for this queen, and so far the queen is... Seems to stay alive for now. The wizards are finding the bottom side. The harbor is starting in. And we have the hawk rise as well. Oh, wh when is he going to use the heal? Oh, early warden ability. Okay, queen ability as well had to be forced to take down the single front tower. There's another king. There's the next wall break. And as we said, this wall break is already like he's adapting because things were not going as planned. Harbor is coming in. The core mutant and front towers though, they are kind of scary for this Hybrid. The Royal Champ is going for the first Motown from the tower with those Siegeberg Hawk Riders. Royal Champion, defending Royal Champion is taking down or should take down the attacking Queen, right? Yep, okay. So Queen is going down. She has no ability left anymore. So now it's all about this hybrid. The Motown from the tower is going down. The Black Mines are hitting those healers. The Royal Champ is getting targeted. The Royal Champion has no ability left anymore and he's at 74%. Guys, can he make this? 75, he needs 88%, 88%, 70, se oh my goodness, he has so many troops on the outside, but there is not too many hybrid troops left alive, he has the scatter on the back end, the royal chip on the back end, 81%, he needs 6, 5 more percentage, 5 more buildings to win this match, 84, 85, oh my goodness, 86 is there, the king, the wizards are walking inside, 87, one more building, and he has... And he did it. Oh my goodness. This was way closer than I thought. This oh my 88% two star was what they what they needed. So they won with two buildings. Two percent. Wow. What a close final. GG is obviously to QSFN, but Hannah Roy, congrats to them. They are winning this edition of the Itsu Cup. And what a match this was.